Okay, yeah, my, I'm Chris Zeip, and uh, I've worked on a number of different projects. Um, I work on a um, server-side JavaScript project called uh, Persevere that runs on Node.js, um, Dojo Toolkit, um, Core Committer, um, author of JSON Schema, and uh, Open Ajax Lance. Uh, committee member, I work for a company called SitePen. Um, we uh, do a lot of investment in Dojo and uh, do training and support and um, help with that. So um, we've uh, put a lot of, of work into open source and so um, it's been a cool company to work for. So anyway, I'm going to give a brief overview of um, Dojo and what it means for the mobile space, um, how it intersects with PhoneGap. So Dojo Mobile is a, a specific project within Dojo that started in Dojo 1.5. Um, and the intent, of course, was um, to give us um, something more, um, more comprehensive in the mobile space. And, uh, and of course, when you're a, a JavaScript toolkit, um, addressing the mobile space is more than just having um, components that are you know, mobile-ish components that have uh, um, you know, touch interaction. Um, there's a lot of different aspects of preparing for the mobile space. Um, you know, we, we're working uh, with people that are developing both, um, as we talked about, mobile applications as well as mobile sites. With mobile sites, there's a strong emphasis, of course, on being very lightweight. So part of that is uh, part of being prepared and ready for the mobile space is, is being able to, uh, to create builds, create setups that um, can work in a, in a bandwidth constrained environment, a, um, a CPU constrained environment. Um, but it's also uh, it's taking advantage of HTML5 features. It's also having um, widgets that work well with the touch interface. So there's a lot of different aspects of it. Um, but part of it is the addition of a, a new mobile um, focused set of widgets. Um, so that's Dojo Mobile, um, which was started in 1.5. Um, so let's see here. First, I'm going um, to I wanted to I'm going to show you um, TweetView and the Feature Explorer. Um, so TweetView is actually a tutorial that we have up on the Dojo documentation site. Um, I'm actually not going to go through that very much. I'll just show you. I'll just point you to it, and it gives you a, a way to walk through using Dojo Mobile to uh, really start leveraging it. And so it's an example application of, of showing tweets, believe it or not, um, on a mobile device. And then um, I'm also going to show you the Feature Explorer just to show you some of the components that are available in Dojo. Um, so, but before that, um, just some key paradigms that we've been hard at work on in Dojo. Um, so currently we're at version 1.6. Uh, part of 1.6 was moving to a new module format. We've been continuing that process of moving to a new module format that um, is really paving the way for us to be more granular in terms of what gets loaded in an application. Um, that's becoming increasingly important, is just saying, hey, uh, you know, just download all of Dojo Toolkit every time you, you build an application. Um, that's you know, that's a, a metaphor that's worked well for a number of years for different toolkits, but increasingly um, that's not going to work, I don't think, going into the future, just to say, hey, you know, let's download 100 kilobytes or 30 kilobytes gzip. Um, but people are increasingly wanting to be able to say, um, you know, there's five kilobyte chunk here, five kilobyte chunk there in there that we don't really need. And when we're targeting a mobile device, we want to be, um, you know, super accurate and super precise in delivering truly needed bytes. Um, so that's been a big push that we've been uh, working on. Um, part of Mo Dojo Mobile is uh, CSS themes for different devices. Um, one of the things that the designers were talking about is that constant trade-off between um, the, mo the native look and feel versus um, your branding. And so um, the, the native themes provide a great um, set of tools for being able to take that native, uh, native style and combine it with your own branding. And of course, you know, obviously with CSS, you can override things and uh, control it. So um, provides that look and feel as well as controls and widgets that look like they're going to that look well with the device. Um, using CSS3 animations, of course, again, uh, it's important to, to leverage uh, the native capabilities of the browser uh, that perform better and don't require, again, as much code being sent to the browser. Another aspect of that uh, 
making sure that we're only sending what we need to to the browser is um, we've also been using there's li um, a library I loosely use the term library because it's kind of more of a coding, uh, coding pattern but the has JS coding pattern of feature detecting um, using a, a particular uh, function call convention just has and then a, a string name that indicates the feature name and uh, what that does I mean of course you can do feature detection any way you want but one of the, the power of this coding paradigm is that then, then we can turn around and at the build level we can do um, device or browser targeted builds that can actually as they're combining code into single files like a typical thing we do um, you know when we're building a, a web application is you know we have you know your few dozen different modules or files and you know you're going to wrap them up in a single file so you can deliver it quickly and you don't have a lot of requests but during that and of course minifying it too but during that we can also now say hey let's do this build um, for this device that we know has these set of features and suddenly lots of code in your um, in your code base that was there in case that feature didn't exist you know for doing things like um, for example, if the query engine, if there's not a native uh, query selector engine, or if there's not an ad event listener, you know, we have lots of code in Dojo to, to, uh, to normalize and shim those things. But if you know that it's going to, you know, a, a WebKit mobile device, suddenly a lot of that code can drop out and we can build a lot more uh, uh, specific um, optimized builds without actually having to build a separate application. And that's one of the really key paradigms that we uh, feel is important um, as we're developing and continuing to evolve Dojo is a lot of the people that we work with don't have, and of course this is why we have PhoneGap, right? A lot of people don't have the money and the resources to build, you know, a native application and uh, a, a web application and all these different applications that they have to maintain. Um, it's for the sake of efficiency, it's so much more valuable to be able to have a single code base and um, do things as simple as creating different builds uh, for different devices. A lot of value in that. So um, compatibility with JavaScript animations so that we can go back and forth between CSS3 capable browsers and those that aren't. Um, and things like uh, normalizing events like orientation events and such events. Okay, so let me pull up the, um, the feature um, explorer real quick. Sorry, this is Again, I had um, this pulled up before my that uh, well-timed crash. Okay, so this is the the tweet view. Um, not sure. You can search for this pretty easily, but it, it's gonna it's a um, tutorial series that takes you through. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at my screen and you guys aren't seeing anything. <laughs> I, seems like when I usually give presentations, I do it on mirror, uh, mirror base, but not this time. Okay, so tweet view tutorial on um, creating a, 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 um, a, getting a Twitter feed and, you know, showing tweets in a um, mobile device. Let me bring up the, the feature explorer. That's what I really wanted to. Yeah. Oh, so you want it zoomed in? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go real quick. I'm not going to show you everything, but just a real quick. Uh, look at the, some of the things that are available. Um, of course, I'm doing this with a, a mouse instead of on a real device, but um, let's see, let me get that. Um, you know, data bindings aren't as interesting on screen. Um, is this big enough? I think you guys can see this, right? Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, let's see. 
So tab bars, um, a lot of these things, of course, are, are familiar elements. Um, so Dojo Mobile is just providing you with uh, some of these things. It's always fun to do, uh, you know, touch style, uh, native style scrolling with a mouse, right? Um, Dojo, of course, has uh, excellent charts, so that's a, another thing that's um, been great to be able to uh, port over to the, the mobile side of things. Um, gauges are a new thing that we've recently created. Um, so. Okay. Okay, so um, a few more features um, to look at. Again, I've, I've talked about the new resource loading, loading capability. Another thing that this really enables is, so we're, we're focusing on making sure that as much as possible all the loading happens asynchronously. Um, this is, uh, can be nice for development just when you're loading lots of modules because um, using native style script injection is way faster uh, form of uh, module loading, so we're really improved there, but it can also be really a great um, asset if you're doing um, loading where you're deferring the loading of certain capabilities of the, the application, where you're loading essential uh, functionality and then la later loading in the more advanced functionality. Um, we're using um, less in our theme. Um, <clears throat> increasingly, our, we're having mobile op optimized uh, widgets. Um, we're also using uh, very much of an MVC style uh, data structure where we have a data model uh, that we call object stores and it's based upon, actually based upon the HTML5 index database API um, which follows like a get, put, remove API. Uh, very simple to use but it provides a, a solid foundation. I think that's one of the things that can be really important especially in a, a phone gap uh, style application where it really is an application um, and you're not just simply using, um, you know, it's not really appropriate just to take a decorator library that, you know, just provides you a, a selector engine with some, you know, animation. But what, you, what you're really doing is building a true application. It uh, can, can be so important to have like a solid, uh, well thought out MVC style architecture where we have real modules, a real data model, real views and controllers that interact with each other. And so uh, the, the Dojo, Dojo Data Object Store um, paradigm um, provides a solid basis for that. Okay, so touch events, um, application controller, device detection, again, the, the lots of solid support for feature detection. Um, Dojo Mobile also includes capabilities for doing layouts and scene, uh, a layout scene uh, type of paradigm for switching screens and doing animations between them. And then you saw some of the other capabilities that it has, um, which really opens the doors for um, being able to build a site that, um, or build an application that can work even perhaps as a mobile site or a mobile application, or is an installable application versus something that loads through your browser. Um, we've also recently um, introduced our, a new package uh, repository, uh, working to improve interoperability with third party packages and being able to define dependencies between packages uh, like you do in, in real programming languages on the server side. So uh, again, I've talked about uh, optimization, feature detection, and how that intersects with our build capabilities. <clears throat> so this is just a little look at our, um, some of the themes that are out there. Um, those are some of the buttons I just showed you from the Feature Explorer. Um, I'm not going to get into this because I just talked about it, but again, our, our object store provides the data model um, and um, We've also been doing some things with, um, in situations where we can normalize events between the browser and the mobile space. And of course, you have to be careful, you can go overboard with this. But there are situations where, you know, you can have common paradigms as far as drag and drop and be able to use, you know, um, 
accept both mouth and uh, touch as initiators of certain drag and drop operations. Um, another aspect to the Dojo, um, it co complements the Dojo mobile space is uh, Dojo X app, which um, provides a framework for defining different scenes as a uh, framework for your um, application. So this again is part of the, the paradigm of having um, an, a, a framework to work within. <clears throat> and finally some more, uh, some more looks at some of the, uh, the charts and um, gauges and as well as map capabilities that we have. So um, I kind of went through some of that quick since I'm trying to hit the allotted time, but um, thank you, appreciate it. Um, any questions, let me know, but uh, thank you. <laughs>